Hey, welcome back. Um, if this is your first time to this channel, uh, my name's Chris Cook. I'm a game developer um, working in the industry. Got about nearly 12 years experience now um, in AAA development. And in my spare time, I like to build my own little mini games, usually focusing on mobile, but trying to move over to PC. Uh, building games that I, I enjoy and hopefully other people enjoy as well. Um, one of the benefits of being I don't, want to say, I don't want to say indie developer, but you know, someone who builds games in their own time is that you have the flexibility to really kind of pursue your own ideas, try and change the status quo. Um, and that's something that I'm trying to do here. Um, so this is a game that I've been building in my own time. Uh, still don't know what to call it yet. Right now it's called Peasants. I'm not sure that's the best name anymore. Uh, that was when it was more of like a Monty Python style game and your peasants were going to be these really daft, stupid, disposable um, resource. Um, now I'm changing it a little bit, partially to do with the art style. Um, and the USP of this game is really that I want to focus on um, your villagers being a commodity, something that you uh, invest in, you put resources in, um, you level up, you build connections with, you uh, build up their story, um, you write their story um, and that means that if that investment goes for example if they die um, they, they leave your village something happens um, it actually feels like a hit to the player and um, they have to then cater for that so for example you know if your best blacksmith leaves so if your only blacksmith leaves and they're on level five blacksmithing which is very hard to get you know you it's basically a full life of blacksmithing for a villager um, which means they're almost like doubling their production value, you know, using other resources, etc. Uh, and they die. All of a sudden you're left without that. You, know, you need to suddenly, first of all, you got to address someone else to that job. So, I'll look at someone else, sorry. So you, you've got to take them from a, a different job if no one's available. Um, and then they're going to start at a much lower level uh, and you need to be able to cater for that. It, it's not like other games where they're just a number and it's like, oh, I'm doing one thing one day can immediately just stick them in another job and do another thing another day. Uh, they actually have to grow and learn. Um, same with like the whole marrying and, and everything. You know, you watch people have these build up these relationships, fall out, fall in love, um, and then you throw them a wedding and you've chosen to throw them a wedding and, and they're now married, they have children. You know, you've been playing this like an hour or two and you'll see that like your actions have had this ripple effect through. You know, and then, you know, a few hours later, you're, their children you'll be marrying or they'll, you'll be dealing with conflicts or maybe you've got to banish them so you remember you, you saw their children being born uh, unfortunately the way they've been managed in the village or part of their trait system has meant that they've not turned out the best or something has happened and you need to actually end up banishing them um it's these stories that the, the player builds up um i think it's going to be yeah really interesting and hopefully set this apart it's it's a mix between um you know the sims and banished it's kind of like a combination of them I'm trying to pick out the best parts of each um the, the games are really enjoy yeah i really do want to focus on the micromanagement of building a, a town still like i love the whole collection of resources building up like ever improving building up efficiency um but i always feel like those games you get to a point where it becomes cookie cutter build where you just have like this oh, i'll just do this and it just always works and it loses that kind of interest there's no randomness anymore um and that was one of the things that i when i played crusader kings 3 recently i realized that how much that randomness can be fun um, you know, when you, um, when you've got to like cope with some randomness that's just appeared out of nowhere, or for example, your, you know, your king gets an illness or your, you know, something, one, yeah, your heirs are suddenly really powerful and you want to try and give them the line. I, I love the whole coping with that randomness and dealing with it and adjusting your, your strategy and how you play the game constantly. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, combination of all that, this art style and everything like that, I can appeal to a bit of a wider audience as well a bit more of like a casual approach um so yeah anyway that's 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 me and that's the game that i'm building um and i'm you know, glad you guys are here for this journey as well so one of the things i've been working on is actually audio the past couple of weeks um so yeah i don't know if you can actually hear um but there, i do have some sound effects in now um so we have like ambience from the animals, from the weather. Um, if you can hear that as well, basically a high UI, it sounds like you're you know, within the wind. Um, and then yeah, your, your jobs and 
sound effects. Um, they occasionally moo. Um, based on how many chickens you have, they, they make noises as well. Um, so yeah, just been trying to look at adding some sound effects to the game, just trying to make it feel a little bit more alive. I've got to say, the music disabled at the minute because I'm trying to work out what's best to do for the music. Um, I haven't really found a track that I'm happy with. Um, I'm probably won't really concentrate too much on that until I really know what I want from the game. Yeah, the other stuff I've been working on as well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so weather. <laughs> Just in time. Um, so yeah, I've been adding weather to the game. Uh, right now it's a cosmetic function uh, system. Um, I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet, but it obviously just helps sell the feel of the world. So I've got the, the sound effects. It, it randomly changes at the minute between um, rainy, foggy, and clear. But I want a stormy in there as well. The stormy one, I do want to do stuff. I, I don't want it to be like you know dangerous. Up, have a chance to cause fires, hit people, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, when it, when it's stormy, that's the one that you don't want. Rainy might do something maybe if you don't have a house and you're sleeping outside maybe it'll do something to the settler um and i'm also i might have a chance as well of also increasing um the farm output maybe um, but like i said it's i haven't really decided exactly what i want to do yet um but yeah i have been working on the actual effects of the environment so if we um change it to a foggy day you can see it kind of like fades in fades out uh, the sound also fades out as well you know, when it's foggy, I want this like really eerie kind of feel of like another silence you get when it's like super foggy. Um, yeah, I'm actually really happy with this fog at the minute. Um, it looks quite nice over different times. Sorry, this <laughs> this makes a noise when it when it's the morning. So um, yeah, that's what you get in there. Um, and then yeah, you know, if you go up to clear, you kind of get that really nice you know, reveal. And yeah, it's I think it's coming on quite nice and sim in the evening as well. Um, so you know when it's when it's late you get these like nice colours and stuff, but then you know, when it's foggy, that kind of you still get those like turns, but it's it's really good in a way. It's probably a little bit too harsh to fog at the minute. Um it is quite hard to see what you're doing, but we can you know we can turn it back, but it, it feels quite nice. And then you know, when it's raining as well. Um Yeah, some of the things I need to do as well is obviously add puddles on the ground, you know, rain actually appearing. I don't actually have specular on any of the assets at the minute because it helps get this cartoony feel, but I think when it's raining, I might actually introduce some specular back in, uh, especially on the ground. Um, I've got the sun in as well. So yeah, I've um, been working on the weather. Um, I've also been working on the environment a little bit more as well. So the ground, as you can see, it's actually got some kind of like um, noise material on now as well so it's not just like a, a blanket clean green uh, we do have some variation in it you can see over here a bit more um, and i've also been adding a bit more foliage as well so right now it's just a scattershot approach just to get some color in there and some variation um, so you can see here we just got like, he's got like fox gloves over here and stuff um, and again it's probably a bit overwhelming at the minute but it does really you know it's nice to kind of get that feeling of color back in um, yeah, some leaf particle effects. I really want these to kind of like come in mainly in, in autumn. Um, so they trigger, you know, when the trees are dying and stuff. Um, we have birds leaving the trees when they're interacted with. You know, it's one of my big goals for this is to make this whole world feel like a playground, to the player at least. Um, so you'll get that the minute, you know, when resources drop on the floor, you can actually tap on the crate and it'll knock it about and stuff. Um, so yeah, right on that feeling of like a toy box. So one of the extra systems I've been uh, working on um, this past week is the appeal system. So all well, that is is basically like a beautification system. So I want to try and split the residential areas up from the industrial areas a little bit more. And um, so I, how I've done that is actually have like this appeal factor uh, on the buildings. Um, and you know this one's got a really bad one because it's near quite a lot of bad stuff. Uh, when I say bad stuff, I mean stuff that would make this area feel ugly or undesirable to live in. Um, so uh, I've got the, the props disabled at the minute, but props can boost up the appeal rating. So the higher, the more props and like you know, trees and bushes and benches and other things like that you have around can actually improve the appeal. It makes the resident who lives there happier. 
um, for example, one of the buildings at the minute, which, you know, so if we place just another chapel, we've got things to build on at the minute, um, you can see uh, there's a little bit of bug where when it goes from one number to a ne the next number, it's actually kind of like going back to the start again, um, but the general system is there, so you can see the appeals increasing. Yeah, these ones are definitely broke for some reason, they shouldn't be going to negative values, there's something wrong with these. Um, but then, yeah, if I was to build you know, like a tavern in between, so their appeal all goes down. And then all of a sudden, these areas are less desirable, so the people won't be as happy. Um, and, and it happens to start to play a big factor as well. I've now got it as well, so uh, we have your happiness here. And um, this um, this will dictate whether they stay or go. Um, so the lower it is, the more chance they have of going. When it reaches 20 and below in happiness, that's when I start like this check every so often you know just a random check like am i going to leave the village am i going to leave the village um and if it hits a certain number then they'll then they'll go and you'll see them walk off and i've got them i got it so you can actually see them walking off so you can actually get an idea of you can click on them you can't bring them back but you can at least see what what's going so you can go like oh crap i've lost my you know my level three blacksmith or i've lost this guy who was married to her or whatever now she's going to be unhappy uh, but i wanted that kind of like you know you got like what a minute or two before they kind of like exit the area um, and it'll tell you yeah, so you can just check um, so yeah that, that's what, something I've been working on um, I've also been working on uh, splitting the, the resources up what I want is I would like a lot of resources in this game um, I want that kind of variation stuff but at the same time I don't want it unruly to manage but I kind of like split it up into groups um, so food is just a general resource you can almost imagine this as a single resource um, when they're hungry they will just eat random food it doesn't matter which one it is um, but the reason why you've got more is the more you have is each one of these will give different benefits and stuff so for example if you have more food people will be happier because there's more of a variation so people you know stay around be healthier in general but then each of these can, can do something else like you know one could um, increase happiness more one could increase stamina more and again it's, it's a random thing you don't really have any control over it but the, but, but having them gives you that extra pack it's always going to be a pack as well so these are kind of things that you always want in um, raw goods these are what you use to build other stuff so these are kind of like crafting goods um, and again just like an easy way to track it is yeah put into a group and then you trade good goods so there's they're what you use to do stuff with so you can use these to uh, trade with to get more money um you can use these to appease your, your citizens uh villagers or make something that you need for these villagers so for example tools to build stuff uh clothes to keep warm um i also looked at the clothes a little bit more as well um you know so they've got no clothes at the minute if i do some resources um i know this as well um they have a timer and every so often they will check and they will then reclove themselves as the clothes get there we go so it's new now and so this pr provides great protection against the cold um, i think it'll also increase like the happiness as well and stuff like that um but that means that when it's when it's cold they'll have much less chance of getting frostbite or a cold or anything like that so you want to keep them keep that high uh, and we've been to do some kind of like um policy system as well so you can choose when you want stuff like this to happen so at the minute I've, the, the, the default is that when their clothes turn to basically none, as in you know trash, uh, they will pick out some extra clothes. So you want that when you're starting out, and you really want to kind of you know, keep your resources spare. Um, but obviously later on in the game, when you've got you know loads and loads of clothes and you've got a good supply line, um, people are going to be happier and more healthier the, the newer the clothes are. And there's four different states: there's kind of like new, worn, rags, and none. Um, so you can change them to be maybe they replace them when they get to rags or even just worn and that way they'll always have like good new clothes on which will again it'll cost you a lot more but if you have that pipeline and that supply there available you know then at least you can use it to your advantage um yeah and also yeah another thing i wanted to do as well is um just try and take a different take on how you actually store goods as well um so a lot of games just basically have like you know you just build a pile of, you know, in the middle east city and you just stuff everything there it doesn't matter if it's grain or whatever it just can go in the same place um and i, I never really I quite like that um so what i'm trying to do is actually split it up into again keeping it within the groups but you will need different storage types for, for these so for example for food you're going to need somewhere that's going to be able to keep that food uh, fresh you know you need somewhere that's like a cellar or a granary or something like that but something that can actually keep your food edible um, raw goods, for example, are the opposite way. It doesn't matter. It's just it's just a raw good that you pulled out of the ground. Most of this is going to be fine, just kept outside, like you know, in a box, for example, in your storage yard. You would just put everything in there. 
um, the barn you might put like you know, your food and stuff and then your trade goods you can put somewhere else so you'll have like a trade depot or, or something but somewhere where you, your trade goods could go these are usually your bigger bulkier items so you'd want something you know that could keep these and maybe it'll provide less storage overall yeah so splitting up into, into these groups i'm actually quite happy with um and conversely just going on from there as well the ui is something i've looked at as well so you can see it's I get rid of the debug menu. I've gone for a little bit of a cleaner look at the minute. I want to get rid of these buttons. These are these are in the way at the minute, but yeah, these can be all minimized now. I've got a villager um, thing here, so you can easily kind of jump between your villagers. Uh, trying to work out the best information to put here, um, but yeah, now it kind of just jumps between, and you can, you can you know, search. Um, yeah, you've got resources here, and then your objectives here. These are objectives just temporary I'm gonna work out what to do with the objectives but um yeah and you can even hide them as well it's nice I think this is much cleaner than what it used to be before I'm gonna have a look at the objectives as well because these are a bit hard to read at the minute um so yeah that's where I am with that so one of the other features I've been working on as well is the uh, basically a refactor of the trait system the, the trait system for me is a, a big USP for this game some of that I know the games I've done before, but I really want to lean on it on this. Um, so if we look here, we have these traits here, and before they were just just wears. I actually changed them for icons now. Um, so the the border of the icon basically represents the rarity of that um, trait. Um, so for example, here you have optimist and resilient. Uh, optimist is legendary. You know, it's one of the best ones you can get. Resilient is epic. Um, obviously these two are good but there is bad ones as well and I'm trying to work out whether I should have the bad ones to begin with uh, and then whether I should have bad ones that have different rarities or not if they're bad ones should just be you know always bad uh, just like a you know, general badness and the good ones have the rarities and stuff because it feels quite weird to get a legendary bad trait but it's really talking about the rarity uh, not how good it is um, but, but yeah either way so these are now most of these work at the minute uh, I'm going to be adding some more of, of time and trying to find a way to really kind of like make it quite evident to the player that they actually are working in some way. Um, so for example here, Optimist. So you can see here that, um, you know, his happiness is 45. Uh, I have nowhere to live minus five. That's usually minus 10. Um, so for example, all the all the negatives are always have. So, you know, we'll keep having one of these are going to be a lot easier to keep to your village. Um, and then also when they do roll to see if they are going to leave um, that roll has a much higher chance of well much lower chance of succeeding so even if they do get low enough that they want to leave your village uh, the chances are again much lower so you, you've really got to be unlucky to lose someone like this this is why this you know optimist is is, is legendary um, another thing that i want to do is similar to crusader kings 3 where you can have um, traits you can pass on um, Obviously, not all of them should be. I don't think something like an optimist, you know, that's not so necessarily something you would pass on. It's maybe something you could learn over time, maybe something you could gain, um, or it could just be a random thing that you know, someone has. Uh, resilient, that's in that works, so you know, less chance to succumb to injuries and illnesses. So, I don't have injuries at the minute per se, um, as in, you know, working at the blacksmith, you've got a small chance of becoming injured, uh, but you do get illnesses if you're if it's winter and you have, you know, bad clothing and you don't have a home to stay in. Um, but this will decrease your chance or decrease the chance of the villager getting ill. So yeah, that, those ones work. Uh, depressed. Uh, that one doesn't work at the minute. I'm still trying to decide whether I want to keep depressed it. But you can see how this one's red in the middle now. Uh, so yeah, green, good. Red, bad. Um, uh, accident prone. Uh, that is one I want to keep in. And that's just the opposite. Basically resilient. It's just more chance of getting, getting ill. Um, lazy, that's something I want to keep in as well. So I'm toying with the idea at the minute that they move slower. Um, but I don't think that's enough. It needs to be you know, something else as well, but I'm not sure what. Um, greedy, this one's in, this one works. Um, so the idea behind this one is that every time they eat food, they take two. And, you know, having that on one person isn't that bad, but I do think this one can be something that you can pass on. Um, or maybe it's quite easy to pick up. Um, 
So yeah, it can really stack up. So you know, say you have five villages with that, that's basically the same as having ten villages food-wise. Um, and again, you have to decide what you want to do. Um, so I've actually got actions now. You can banish people. I think it's actually working at the minute. No, it's just a placeholder. Um, but yeah, you can you have that choice. You know, like right, this guy's bad traits, not really helping, doesn't have many job levels. Uh, maybe he has a disease that can be passed on to other people as well. All right, let's just just you know banish him. You're going to lose a person. Um, in your village but you know overall it's going to be better for the village in general one thing that i would i've been trying to add on as well and trying to work out the best way to do it in the you know before in the short time frame i have at the minute until i really want to flesh the game out is adding um these events into the game so for example when, when people get married when you upgrade your settlement or when these events um and how i want to do them in my head anyway is that for example you know, when you want two people to get married uh, you click on the chapel, you know, you marry them and stuff, but then that will play out an event in your whole village, which will override everybody's behavior tree. And then what will happen is that everybody will start like walking over to the church, the, the people will come out, you know, everyone will be cheering and stuff and be happy. Um, and you get this kind of like, you know, your, your camera will go like 360 around the church and everything, and there'll be little you know, effects going off, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's really make it feel alive and like, you know, you're part of, you know, this little world here and stuff. Uh, I don't have that at the minute. Uh, it's gonna, it's, gonna say, it's, a, it's a beefy system to, to, to build primarily because of the behavior tree. Um, so I need to take into account of like, a villager could be doing anything at any point <clears throat> and I need to inject new action in at some point and go, right now we need to stop what you're doing and do this. <clears throat> and then when you finish, go back to what you were doing. And that's actually quite difficult. Um, so that's I might need to like refactor the behavior tree a little bit and actually almost keep like a, a diary of what that person's doing so whenever i in, inject something in i can immediately go back to that position which i think will also help with my load safe system as well um but anyway yeah for the, for the time being until i have that um i basically have um just a placeholder which is sorry that music was loud um but yeah, we're going to have this kind of you know, almost like original civilization style, like very, very old, but I always quite liked it. Um, you'd have like a pop-up on screen, you know, like some old artwork from the medieval era or something. Um, <clears throat> I find it on Wikipedia, so I think it's free to use, if not a bit rid of it. Um, and a description, and then here it'll tell you, you know, what what has happened here. So move the bonus, so it would be like, uh, X and X have got married, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and because of that, as you can also see as well is that I have and you know, once they've been married um, I need to actually work on this a little bit more but uh, if you see here this is a random villager that I picked up um, so she's recently prayed but also villagers got married and this one actually lasts for I think if it's a different villager to yourself it's like a month but if it's the actual villager themselves um, so if I who's this might and and Mark and uh, Yeah, there we go. So if it's actually the person who got married, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, it's because they're in the building. That's why. I need to fix it. <laughs> Game death for you. Um, so yeah, these guys have actually just got married. And so they actually have plus 25 to their happiness for a long time. So, you know, marrying people can actually be a good way to, to game the happiness game. Um, so for example, if people are unhappy or whatever, you can just quickly get a marriage out there or something, just so people are actually a little bit happier. Um, Especially if someone's going to leave, or whatever you know, you can you can do that. Uh, marriage is going to cost you obviously to do, um, and also I'd like it that when you know I was talking earlier about an, an event which interrupts everybody, it's also going to have a knock-on effect to your entire economy um, because you basically for what, four or five hours, maybe a full day, you're going to basically stop people from doing what they're doing and do this. Um, so you got to judge the payoff. You know, do you stop all production, but then your villagers are all a lot happier? Uh, they're celebrating all the social values that go up um, or do you not do it it's, it's that it's that payoff so you can choose when to really do it as well your weddings um and i think i also did it for upgrading as well so yeah you have one for upgrading so you know again that whole kind of medieval artwork and you know, something can happen yeah that's, that's pretty much it um uh, here we got the fox rolling in that's nice uh yeah, anyway it's pretty cool i'm looking forward to getting the stormy weather in as well um yeah, as I said before, with the audio, I want to play around on when this rolls in, do something with the reverb and stuff to make it really feel kind of like eerie. 
I'm not sure quite how I'm going to do that yet. Um, yes, and it's the morning. Cool. Yeah, so th that's where I am at the minute. Um, it's going along pretty well. As I said before, I want to try and get some kind of demo out by March, if possible. Um, I'm roughly on track. Might be a little bit later, but, <clears throat> you know, it's done when it's done. Um, I need to have some more buildings in as well, and some more production buildings and stuff. Uh, I need to work on the farm a little bit more, get up and running, especially with the undulating terrain. It doesn't quite work as well as it used to. But yeah, so that's where I am. Um, yeah, again, thank you for watching. Uh, you know, hit that like and subscribe button, please. It's really, really helpful. Um, any suggestions you have, any ideas, anything you want to talk about, just message me. I've got my email now on um, the web, uh, the YouTube as well. Um, and yeah, and if you could like our wish list of products as well, that'd be really, really helpful. Um, yeah, brilliant. Look forward to speaking to you again. Cheers.